welcome back to my channel this is miss travel her here with another video look at my puppy guys say hi to ginger oh god say hi ginger oh ginger say hi she, i think she hears someone so hey guys welcome back to my channel this is miss travel her here with another video in this video i'm going to be talking all about my stay in san jose costa rica i went back in march so if you haven't checked out my video make sure you do so after watching this one it's under solo travel vlogs to costa rica and while you're at it don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more travel vlogs travel videos all things travel okay so i just want to give you one quick travel tip okay don't tell nobody i told y'all but i'm kidding i'm kidding okay so <laughs> the first travel tip i want to give you really quickly before you get into the video is to make sure you let your bank know that you're going to be traveling abroad whether you're going out of the country for two days three days it doesn't matter let your bank know how long you're going to be in that country for if you don't let them know well chances are your car is going to get locked nobody wants their car locked on vacation okay entry into costa rica let's get right into it my experience entering in costa rica was not that bad i did have trouble with my travel medical insurance so for some reason my medical insurance was not uploaded into the site so i did what i could to prove that i had medical insurance but when i got to costa rica and i was in line to pass you know immigration or whatever lord my qr code went red it was supposed to go green it went red so i'm like oh shoot now i can't get into the country but they took me somewhere where i could purchase travel insurance but since my stay wasn't that long i think they just let me pass but i did show proof that i had medical insurance it was just something that happened with the site that it just didn't go through according to the government right now at this moment they want unvaccinated travelers to fill out the travel form stating that they have medical insurance to cover them if they were to catch covid during their stay in costa rica for vaccinated travelers you don't have to fill out the travel form but you do have to show proof that you have your vaccination card again unvaccinated travelers have to show proof of medical insurance by uploading it to the travel health form website yeah once you're done filling out your travel form you uploaded your medical insurance you want to save and screenshot that picture of the qr code that you get after doing so also if you don't have travel insurance i have a link for that so if you want to purchase travel insurance and you don't have any i'll put the link in my description box you guys follow the link and you upload that to the travel form website as far as the testing right now i didn't see that you had to be tested to enter the country you do need a covid test to return to the u.s and i will link some covid sites in my description box as well and yeah you guys will be good to go next let's talk about transportation when i got to costa rica i did not plan on having a personal driver i already had in my head that i was going to use uber 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 i ended up staying at a hostel so the hostel had transportation for me all i had to do was pay if you're not comfortable with uber um i would advise you to google some reliable transportation in costa rica or take a taxi and i'm pretty sure they have taxis at the airport definitely do your research and use google if you have to um costa rica is pretty safe especially for solo travelers like i didn't feel like i was in danger at any point in time while staying in costa rica i felt totally fine so I was comfortable with using Uber. But here's the thing with Uber though, you cannot have Uber pick you up at the airport. It's it's a no-no. You're, you're not allowed. You're, you're not allowed. To use Uber at the airport. I don't even think Uber is allowed in the country. But that's what I used. And um, it was pretty inexpensive. It got me from point A to point B. Next, I want to get into, drum roll please, accommodation, where I stayed while I was in San Jose. So, while I was doing my research, I always look at the hotels and Airbnbs in the area. One thing about Airbnb that I love is that I feel like I'm at home, especially with the places I choose, like I feel like I'm at home, like I feel so comfortable. And in this case, like Airbnb, I just, I, they, they they got me they got me I'm like listen this 
place is really nice what i most liked about my airbnb was it was so stylish and it was very pretty like i loved it my favorite part about it was the view i don't know i think i was on like the 17th floor i can't remember but i was way high up in the building like i was so high like you could see the whole city like it was so beautiful and that was like literally my favorite part about staying there was that view like and my stay was only $55 a night. $55 a night. You got your own one bedroom apartment. The building has a lot of amenities like a pool area. You can do yoga upstairs. You can go all the way to the top of the building and see like a even better view of the place. Like it was so nice. I would go there and stay there again. Like if I could stay there more than a month, longer than a month, I would. There was so many restaurants around in the building. So many things to do around there. So if you do choose to stay in that Airbnb, tell the host that I sent you. If you haven't signed up for Airbnb and you need to sign up, sign up with my link below and yeah, get started stay there like it's really nice it's worth the money as i mentioned before i also stayed at a hostel for one night it was called trip on hostel and i believe i paid 40 dollars for one bedroom and it came with like breakfast the breakfast was like fruits and you know healthy you had healthy options and bread and stuff so yeah i stayed there they do have pets you know the people that were staying there as well they had pets so if you're not a fan of pets i would not like recommend but if you do want to try hostel out that is one of the best hostels in the city so definitely check that out it's called trip on hostel all right let's get into the restaurants i ate at a couple of places in the city the thing was there were a lot of restaurants around me i just didn't get to all of them one of the restaurants I went to, I'm going to look here because I don't I don't know how to pronounce the name, so it's going to sound a little funny when I say it. La Escuela de Buenos Aires, I believe. I'll put it down here just in case I pronounce anything wrong. Um, so this restaurant I went to with the two other solo travelers I met at the time, Jay, I believe that's his name, and um, Shelby. Shelby is my good friend. We actually just came from our birthday trip a couple months ago. But yeah, that the food there was really good. Um, it's Argentinian style. The sangrias in Costa Rica. Let's 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 give I can't even get the words out that I want to say. The sangrias in Costa Rica are bussin'. That's all I'm gonna say. Bussin'. They're so good. Like I've never had a really good sangria until I went to Costa Rica. They're perfect. And these bartenders, they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. So this next place is not a restaurant. It's more like a bar type of vibe. And it's called El Social. I went there by myself and I had, you know, some drinks at the bar and I ordered me some really good food. Costa Rica really does have some good, good food. Um, they do not disappoint so yeah when I went to the bar I had got me like um, some beef quesadillas and I believe I spent like it had to be like eight dollars it wasn't that much but it was a lot of food it was a lot of food it was really good though I'm also gonna link some recommendations down below for restaurants that I didn't get to eat at that I wanted to eat at so definitely check my description box for all of the information regarding the things that we talked about here okay don't forget next we're gonna move on to nightclubs so the two clubs that i heard were really good in san jose were antique and la concha de la rola <laughs> them l's get me on that is like a reggae style club so if you're into dance hall and reggae and you want to hear the best DJs because they do come from San Jose and they be turning up all around Costa Rica. Definitely check those clubs out and let me know how they were because when I went, they had curfew. Don't be like me. Go there. Don't realize there's a curfew. Get dressed on your way out. You realize nobody's on the street. Well, everything's closed. You know, last but not least let's talk about the activity that i did so the cooking class was booked through um airbnb airbnb has this thing called airbnb experiences where you can find activities and things to do for a 
good price. My cooking class, I believe it was $41, but it was a three hour class. I got to make a Costa Rican authentic dish with the Costa Rican family. They welcomed me to their home, we danced, we ate good food, they taught me how to speak Spanish. We went to the market, we picked out fresh fruits and vegetables, they were so good. The whole experience all together was fun. It was so fun. I was tired by the end of the night because I had just got off my flight and I was like, you know what, this is the only time I'm going to be able to do this activity. Let me go because when I'm tired, I do not want to do anything, I just want to sleep. So I was like, you know what, we're just going to do this activity and then we'll call it a night. I just want to thank Mar and her family for allowing me to come to their house and show me how to cook. I would never forget that, honestly. It was so fun. So if you guys do that experience, please let them know I said hi and t tell them that I sent you. The next thing I did was walk around the city of San Jose. I learned a lot about the city. Um, I believe the experience was about two to three hours. It might have been more or less. Eric took me around the city. He took me through the markets, downtown, and it was quite a walk, but it was really interesting. While I was on the walk, I got pooped on, and I knew it was gonna happen, and I told Eric, I was like, Eric, we gotta go, because there's a lot of birds flocking around here, and one's gonna poop on me if we don't leave right now. I just know it. He's like, no, it's fine. Just, you know, take a look, la la la. I'm like, all right. I'm looking around him. A bird poops on me and he was like, all right, let's go, let's go. It was nice to learn about the city and the buildings and things like that. So thank you, Eric, if you're watching this video for that experience. I had a great time. We ended the, the walking tour with a nice dinner. I think it was like a four or three course meal. But yeah, the food was really good. And guess what? I got me some sangria again. That was the first time I had a sangria. So when I had that sangria, I went to go get another one at other restaurants. Like I was not playing. The ambiance of the restaurant was nice. The the waiter was really nice and helpful and professional. It was it was really a vibe. So everything that I did in San Jose was fun. I met a lot of nice people. I ate really good food and last but not least I enjoyed the view of my Airbnb. Whether you're in the city, whether you're on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica, you're still going to have a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do so. Don't forget to check the description box because most of the information is going to be in there for you in the links. Thank you. Mm -hmm.